Brad. I'm currently on the phone with Brady. He's another one of the musicians that reached out about the interview series. So I'm going to go ahead and give him the chance to introduce himself. Uh, what's up, everybody? Uh, my name is Brady. I'm a mu- musician from central Minnesota, uh, about 30 years old. So i um, been playing music for about, uh, well, live, I would say six years, but in general for about uh, 18 years. Awesome. So uh, let's talk about that. Um, when did you first find music and, you know, what pulled you into it and made you want to be a part of it? So growing up, um, my dad, Richard, um, he was a big like uh, 60s, 70s kind of era guy, you know, and uh, he was big into Elvis. And so I remember growing up, you know, some of them artists like Elvis, Beach Boys, uh, The Birds, Beatles, um you know paul revere and the raiders all those guys that he showed me you know i listened to a lot and then as i got older you know a friend of mine in like sixth grade borrowed me his like book of cds and it had like pop roach and slipknot and i'd never heard anything like that before really and so it just kind of evolved into what it is now Okay, so you would say that you were kind of motivated, influenced by, you know, the people around you introducing you to new music and things like that? Yep, yeah. Excellent. So, uh, did you participate in, you know, the regular school curriculum for music, whether it be, you know, concert band or choir or anything like that? So I did, in fifth grade and sixth grade, I actually played the clarinet and I was in choir every year of high school. Um, but I didn't, I got my first guitar when I was 12. It was a hand-me-down that was given to me. Okay. And <clears throat> that's where I was going to go next. When did you, uh, you know, first get your instrument, obviously when you were 12 and then, um, you know, how did that kind of set into you the motivation to learn to play and then start creating with it? All right. So you're going to laugh, um, when I say this, but so when I got this guitar, it was because I was on this quest for people to like, like me uh you know not that i didn't have friends or anything but like you know 12 coming on 13 you know i wanted to make myself stand out you know i wasn't like a, a sports star or anything mm-hmm. like that i mean i played football baseball but uh you know i wanted you know someone to notice me mainly girls and uh so i kind of pretty much started learning how to play guitar to help me you know get a girlfriend and the first couple songs i learned was uh, every rose has its thorn and brown eyed girl Nice, nice. I, w- I would have uh, guessed also maybe knocking on Heaven's Door or um, um, and any of the ones in the whole ballad genre kind of thing, definitely. So uh, once you did kind of figure out, um, you know, that's kind of the route that you wanted to take uh, and you learned those songs, at what point do you think you kind of you know, move past, uh, you know, needing the validation to the point where you felt comfortable uh, entering into like the creative spectrum with the instrument? So it really wasn't long after when I, you know, once I got a couple songs down, I thought to myself, you know, why don't I try to make my own song? Because the whole goal, you know, I got an acoustic guitar and I, and I always wanted to be one of those guys who could play and sing, which is why I learned those first two songs. And so I always kind of dabbled in trying to make my own stuff. And I remember one time I went over to a buddy's who had like this makeshift recording set up in his basement. I recorded a cover of uh, Soul Asylum and put it on my MySpace. And uh, yeah, I, uh, so it really wasn't too long after, you know, maybe a year or so when I started very, very slowly dabble in, in the creative Okay. And then once you did kind of uh, start to, you know, get your feet wet doing it uh, that way and writing for yourself, um, do you feel like those original songs that you learned kind of had a, you know, an informative nature of the way that you approached writing? Or do you feel like you kind of wanted to branch out from that and start creating your own type of content? You know, it's kind of hard to say, to be honest. I mean, uh, it's kind of a tough one, I guess. It just... You know, it influenced me by the way that just I knew that I didn't have to be like the shredder or, you know, I could write a simple song, even if it was just a couple chords, because there's songs that are two, three chords that are totally famous and popular. So, I mean, that learning those few songs in the beginning that I did kind of showed me that, you know, but it wasn't, you know, over the next few years, I kind of tried and I'd write like maybe a verse or something or whatever. And I always 
more or less dabbled and played with it for enjoyment. And it wasn't up, you know, years later until I started to kind of get more serious about, all right, this is, uh, this is what I want to do. Okay. And so once you did reach that point where, you know, you, you made that decision, you wanted to do it, you were going to do it. Did you start looking for other bands to play with, or did you want to front a band? Uh, what was your, kind of your, uh, idea of how to, uh, you know, start getting out there and playing? So uh, probably about uh, freshman year, I had met a got, friend of mine who I still play with, um, who was a drummer, and um, he had a brother who played bass, and we had another guy we knew who could really play the guitar, and at the time, I was still pretty green yet. Um, you know, I was still kind of learning, and, and, you know, I could play a song, but I had to play it at my own pace, not necessarily like a performance pace. Um, so we had like this jam group that we played with and uh it, it was hard because you know they lived in a different town i didn't have a license i was only like 15 but i was actually singing you know for them and we did songs like everlong all the small things born to be wild and uh you know after a little bit of that it just kind of it got too hard so those guys and i just kind of went in our separate ways and they went on to become a really good cover band because they were all living close and then you know i didn't do anything for a couple of years and I met another guy who had a band and I jammed with those guys a couple of times, but, uh, wasn't until I was, you know, 20, maybe even 21, uh, when I really put myself out there to actually join a band based off of an ad that was seen on Facebook of someone looking for a guitar player. And I figured, well, you know, at that time I had just been playing a lot and, and, you know, it was kind of like, you know, maybe I should check it out and see what's going on. So, um, that's kind of how I got to, got to there. Okay. So then you joined, um, a cover band, um, and then started doing shows. Uh, did you at some point kind of figure that you want to return to doing original stuff or are you comfortable with the cover circuit? Um, so I'm actually in a couple cover bands right now and I'm in an, uh, an original metal band, but, uh, yeah. So, um, while you were relaying the question, I got to thinking about when I first joined, it was the band I joined was the full throttle band, which I'm still in. And that was, uh, eight years ago. So I would have been 21 and that was just off of an ad that the singer posted up and, you know, I figured, like I said, I'd, I'd check it out. And yeah, so we got this, um, group together and I tried out for them. Well, then I ended up having a back surgery shortly after that. So they had found someone else to take the place. But once I had healed, um, I ended up playing a show with them. And then there was a period there where we kind of went through a couple members. And then it wasn't for about another year when we really had our um, lineup, you know, with our new lead guitar player, new drummer, and a bass player. And, uh, yeah, so we went out and we started playing shows, um, you know, that following year. I mean, we only played the one show in, uh, 2014 and then 20, right at the end of 2015 is when we really hit it hard. Okay. And so you mentioned that, uh, that along with a couple other bands are your current projects. So, uh, tell me about that. What, what are all of the projects that you're currently working on? Okay. So. Full Throttle is the band I've been in the longest. I've been in the, in that for, um, you know, like about eight years now. Um, and that's a country, you know, 90s country, modern country, and a little bit of classic rock kind of band. Um, played a lot of shows, five-piece band. Um, and then my other band, so I play rhythm guitar in Full Throttle, and I do backing vocals, and then there's a couple songs I sing myself. And then in another band that I'm in, Audio Scars, that is a 90s grunge, modern rock, a little bit of classic rock band. And I play bass in that, actually, and I sing backing vocals. And, uh, you know, there's, I sing Summer of 69. And then the all original metal group I'm in is called Karma Sutra. And um, <clears throat> that I play rhythm guitar in as well. And I just joined those guys this summer. Okay, and those are all local to the uh, Minnesota music scene. Yep, yeah, we've played up in the cities. We've played um, Audio Scars has played kind of all over the state. Karma Sutra, um, I've played at the Caboose. We opened up for Psycho Stick in June. Uh, one of the bands that opened up for them, I should say. 
And then uh, Full Throttle is kind of just more out here in the rural southern Minnesota area. We've played kind of up in Savage, but that's about as far east as we've gone. But we've been, you know, the country thing seems to be more of a, a, a deal with the small, not you know, smaller towns in a way. Not necessarily. I mean, you know, there's cities too where they got their country bars and stuff, but it just seems that band has had more success closer to home where audio scars with the uh, the wide genre of rock that we do. You know, we do a lot of stuff from the 60s to now. And, um, you know, we've played a lot of rural places and we've also gotten into more, you know, city places as far as, uh, you know, we've played at Serums and Anoka. Uh, we played at uh, Flick of Birds up there by East Rush Lake. Um, we've played in St. Cloud at the Keller Bar a couple times. So, so with all this, uh, all the time that you've been working on music, learning instruments, and playing with all these bands, what are some of your most prominent memories that stick out to you and you know keep you motivated? So one thing that sticks out to me um, is and it relates to Full Throttle. So when we first started doing shows. I was always kind of nervous just because it was like, you know, the first few shows are always, well, here we go, you know, hopefully you don't screw up or make someone mad, whatever. And um, so they're, my buddy's wife, um, they used to come to our shows, him and her, her name's <clears throat> Sloan, and she would always yell, you know, go Brady. And uh, at every show she'd show up at, you'd, all, you'd just hear it from wherever she was standing, she'd just shout it. And I'd always, it helped me build my confidence a lot. And she's actually got a shirt that says Brady's number one fan. And, uh, you know, so, yeah, it's uh, that's, that's that was a big thing. And then in Full Throttle, we had a guy who helped us get gigs and kind of manage us. And uh, his name's Gumby. And unfortunately, we lost him a couple of years ago. Uh, but, uh, you know, he was such a great dude. It's just something that's always stuck with me. And we've been through so many, in Full Throttle, you know, me and Jason, the singer, are like brothers. Um, you know, me and the guy that played guitar for us for quite a while, Kevin, you know, me and him, I was in his wedding, I was in Jason's wedding, you know, so I formed some really good friendships in my first, you know, band that went out and did stuff. And that's something that I've always, you know, kind of cherished and I'll always continue to cherish is just that, you know, before I was able to do these things that I do now with other bands, you know, that I ha I just had the one and those guys were always, we always had each other's backs and, you know, it's something that you just don't uh, let go of. Sure, absolutely. Um, so where can people listen to your stuff and, you know, find where you guys are gigging and, you know, follow you on social media? Yeah. So on Facebook, if you look up, uh, the full throttle band, we've got a page there. Um, our photo is kind of black and white of, uh, I think it's of Jason dressed as Vince Neil. Cause we used, we did like this eighties end of the night thing where we put on big hair and things like that. And, and we'd play a few eighties, you know, rock songs and people really like that and then for audio scars um on facebook you just look up audio scars band and the picture's kind of rainbow um our next show is actually on wednesday and at in a lich field at uh the muddy cows so you'll see that there um full throttle right now we're just kind of working on retooling our what our approach for next year so we don't have anything on the books right now um karma sutra um, if you look up that page, uh, you'll see the logo. Um, it just says Karma Sutra, and I think it's it says something. With our last show is with uh, Sense of Purpose at the Depot Coffee House, um, but our next show is coming up here in uh, I believe it's December 30th, and I believe that's at the Keller Bar in St. Cloud. Um, you can look up Music by Karma Sutra on YouTube. Um, they've got a few albums on there, um, and then I've actually got my single out, Moonlight Woman. Uh, you can find that on Spotify, YouTube. Just look up Moonlight Woman by Brady Morin, M-O-R-Y-N, and you'll find it. Awesome. Very cool. So I always like to give the person I'm interviewing uh, the opportunity to put out their last words. So just a message that you resonate that you want to throw out there. All right. Well, I guess a uh, message I would like to throw out to anybody listening to this, you know, maybe someone who just, if you're not someone who's playing, um, you know, just, and but you want to just do it. I mean, you know, every, I was always worried about uh, negative comments, things like that. And you're going to have that. I've learned, um, you know, you can't please everybody. Just go out, play your heart out, enjoy it. And if anyone has anything negative to say about it, just remember you had the guts to go up there and do it. 
they're just sitting there watching. Um, so don't let things like that get to you.